hello, hello. I'm Doug Sharples. I'm going to be your virtual pilot today. And welcome to episode number 20 of my FSX Flight Simulator FS Economy Career Mode. Today's trip, we are going to be travelling from Bagar in the Faroe Islands. And we're going to be travelling southeast to Sumbra in the Shetland Islands in Scotland. Currently on board, we've got two Scandify passengers, four business travellers, four air taxi passengers, and some redirected baggage. I've currently rented a Cessna 208, registration number Lima November Sierra Uniform X-ray. I've currently put some fuel in it, so there's 150 gallons of fuel in. There's 10 passengers on the flight, and it's going to fetch me in a total value of 7,692, but we'll sort that out at the end of the video, how much we do actually get for taking this flight because there's going to be fuel cost incurred, there's going to be ground fees. So what we'll do now is we'll just go into Active Sky. We'll go and have a look at what the weather conditions are at Vagar in the Faroe Islands. And then we'll have a look what the weather conditions are like at Sombra. Our weather conditions currently at Vagar are showers, light rain. Uh, we're at a temperature of 9 degrees centigrade, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And currently our winds are 12 knots from 150 degrees. Uh, this is variable direction from 130 to 190. We've got overclass codes at 400 feet and visibility is 3.1 miles. What we'll do is we'll go and have a look at Sumbra Airport. Uh, at Sumbra Airport, uh, it's cloudy conditions, got the temperature of 9 degrees Celsius, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, got winds at 13 knots, 200 degrees. We've got a few clouds at 1,100 feet, broken at 3,600 feet. We're going to be traveling at an altitude of 11,000 feet, so we're going to experience some clouds when we're coming into land. Visibility is 10 miles, so it's good visibility. What we'll do is we'll go into uh, my little nav map and we'll go and have a look at the route that we're going to be taking. I'll come into little nav map. Now, I've not started the simulator yet, so my plane won't show on this map, but I am going to be we sat at stand one of general aviation. With the wind conditions they are at Varga, we're going to be taking off from runway 13. We're going to be travelling in a southeasterly direction. We're going to go to our first waypoint. Just zoom out. Now this waypoint is not on the FSX map and it's not in little nav map. I've just had to set it. But it is a waypoint called Luvet, which is about 15 miles away from the airport. Uh, just northeast of Torshaven, which is this town here. When we hit that waypoint, we're going to be travelling in a southeasterly direction. Direction, 132 degrees or 101 nautical miles to a waypoint called Emos. And from there, we're going to continue in that southeasterly direction till we hit Sumbra. But what will happen before we get to Sumbra is that I'm going to change it from VFR to IFR um, when I get to my top of descent, and they will vector me in onto runway 27 with the wind conditions as they are at Sumbra. So at some stage, we'll, if you can follow the cursor, we'll end up coming in around this way and so circling back on ourselves to pick up the ILS glide slope for runway 27 and from runway 27 we'll turn left down onto runway 15 and we'll come off at taxiway delta which will lead us into the general aviation area. So what I'll do is I'll get into FSX and I'll join you in the cockpit at stand 1 in Varga airport. Hey everybody, I'm your virtual pilot, Doug Charples, and I'm welcoming you into the cockpit of this Cessna 208. So we'll be taxiing to runway 13 via runway 31. Once we take off, we'll be climbing to an altitude of 11,000 feet. Once at our cruising altitude, we'll see nothing but water until we get to the coast of the Shetlands. So I'll rejoin you at the top of the climb when we're at 11,000 feet.
Uh, there's been something going on in my town. It happens in every town, every city. Um, what it is, it's the homeless. Now, I live in a town near Manchester. I'm not going to name which town it is, and I'm not going to name the person that's homeless. But what is the local paper has been running a story on this gentleman, and what for the past 30 years he's been homeless out on the streets and he has his own little spot now people we've done it when we've been shopping we've been past he sits at a set of lights a third set of traffic lights and we've always given him a couple of quid you know because he's outside of the town centre he's on a main dual carriageway he's outside of the town centre and what happened a few months ago is some kids set fire to his tent and his sleeping bag whilst he was in it and he has a dog with him he has a Jack Russell dog and this dog alerted him that it was on fire so what happened then there was a pouring of um, you know a bit of rage a bit of anger going on these these youths were never caught no matter how much cctv there's the it's never used it's it's always inoperable well, you can't get the faces but it's 2019 and in my eyes nobody should be homeless but this guy um what's happened is he's been bought new tents He's been bought new sleeping bags. People have given him stuff. And what happened last week? Somebody took a video of the council removing all his stuff. And they thought it was it was wrong that he was doing no harm. But it's, they don't. They do no harm. But somebody had taken this video and hadn't known the full truth. Or so what it is that for this guy and it was later found out that the council had housed him they put him into a bed set and this bed set it's not in how can i say it's not in a decent area it's full of um, prostitutes drug takers alcoholics so this guy's been housed now there are people legitimately would have loved to have had that opportunity just to have that bed set just to have a roof over their head and they know they can't and i know a lot of homeless people it's not their fault that they're in that situation but with some it is and i do actually feel sorry for a lot of them but there's some of them taking advantage um now this story has been running for a few weeks and earlier on this week they ran another story on him and he was back in the same spot he was back in where he was originally and what what's got me about it is that he's intentionally made himself homeless again and the reason he's made himself homeless is because the council put him into this bed set and there was no furniture in it in his words there was a carpet a kettle and a toaster well we all have to start somewhere mate we do when i moved into my first house if it wasn't for hand-me-downs of furniture and buying the cheapest furniture that there was, then I wouldn't have had a house. I, 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 I wouldn't have been able to call. So we've all got to start somewhere. But this guy's made himself intentionally homeless. Now his excuse is that he cannot cope with, um, how do I put it? Cannot cope with everyday life day-to-day -day grind of trying to pay bills and motivate yourself but it, it happens in, it's in every town it's 2019 and there's no way that anybody should be almost intentional or not now i know that the council that housed him they do have a scheme where if they're struggling for furniture and everything they do give them a little bit of help and all he had to do was say look i need a bed i need a settee i need a cooker i need whatever it might not have been top notch but at least it would have given him some help and people have even said if he'd have called out to him then heard about him you know we all can't have 60 inch tvs we all can't have a three thousand pound electronic reclining suite we don't have top of the range cookers or fridge freezers or microwaves we don't have a, a 2019 plate car which is all mod cons no we all start somewhere we've got to start from the bottom we all start from the bottom but this bloke's three year older than me and at his age at my age i could never ever even think about you know 
making myself homeless. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. He's not, some people aren't as privileged as I am. I don't have a lot, but I have enough to get by. But I, I feel I'm, I'm quite privileged. I know some people, I know some people have had a hard time of it. And we are only one, as they say, we are one paycheck away from being homeless. But the bugbear is that he had a roof over his head and he's intentionally made himself homeless again. Which means that the taxpayers, us, the taxpayers, are going to end up cleaning off cleaning up after them again because when they do vacate where they're staying they don't take all the stuff with them and it's down to councils to clean all the mess up now i know that if i pass this block again i won't be giving him any money again i won't i won't give him money knowing what's happened what he's done there was another story in the same paper it's just a local rag and there was another guy claimed to be homeless and this person had been giving him a couple of quid every couple of days and at the weekends if she's seen him you gave him a fiver and somebody pulled her and said why are you giving him money because he's got a house so he's out on the out on the streets begging and he's actually living in a house so what this person did is they followed him and watched where he went they didn't follow him to his house they've just followed him to an area watched him for and she was given an address so out of curiosity she went to his house and knocked on the door and he answered the door but he wasn't dressed like a vagabond like a like somebody out on the streets <coughs> He'd all top-notch gear on, brand new trainers, brand new tops, brand new pants, and he was making five hundred pound a day begging on the streets. Now, I, if they, if they are, and I can tell that they're in dire need, I will. I won't give them money, but I'll go and get them a cuppa. I'll go and get them something to eat. I've done it many times, but it's just people that are playing the system. Now they think that it's an easy target. That people, they, they play on the um, generosity of people, and it, it does. It does upset me when I. And I see things like that. But I don't know what it's like where you're from. I don't know whether it's exactly the same. To us, the town where I live, the council have put the rates up and the rents of the shops and properties and everything so high that the town centre is becoming a ghost town because people don't want to come into this town. Now, I'm proud of this town. It's it, There's a lot of old buildings and the town hall is an absolute splendour to look at. It's full of Victorian houses, Georgian houses, but it's also full of a lot of derelict areas and a lot of these derelict areas are in the town centre. There was a, there's another story in the paper, um, it's about a building. Now, this building couldn't, they, they couldn't sell it and it used to be a wallpaper shop, wallpaper wicker furniture shop. Well the guy who owns the shop, the building, couldn't sell it and over the last eight to ten months there's been bits and bats there's been new windows going in um been stuff for cladding going up but nobody knew what was going on and then it was reported in the local rag again that it was going to be a 13 bedroom hotel with a cafe on the side i know for a fact that i wouldn't want to stay there because to the front of you you've got b&m bargains you walk out the door to the left of you there's a brand new car showroom going up and to the right of you you've got one of the main roads into the town center and there's nothing there buildings are empty there's derelict buildings and it's it's just not nice. I know people turn around and say that it's just a place for get your head down for the night. But I want to look out the window and I want to see something that would entice me to stay there. And that wouldn't entice me to stay there. But I commented on social media and I got a lot of, got a lot of grief about it, you know. At the end of the day, I thought you can't polish your turd and would you stay there? And nobody would answer me. But our town, they can't repair the potholes in the roads because apparently there's cutbacks and the 30 million shortfall so that jobs have got to go. Um, well, maybe some of the councillors that are earning the six-figure fees should just turn around and say, right, well, I'll tell you what, for 12 months I'll do it for minimum wage. No, no, they'll not do it. They'll line their own pockets first. That's what it is. It's a corrupt... Our, our council's corrupt. I'd say it's corrupt. Um, we've just had a new interchange, new bus and rail interchange. That's just cost God knows how many millions. There was nothing wrong with the old one. Everybody knew where the old one was, but where they've moved it, it's affected trade for the la for the local market. And market traders are complaining that there's no footfall through there because they've moved the bus station. And when you've got Manchester on your doorstep and the train station's there, you just jump off a bus, get on the train, go to Manchester, get on the train, come back, jump straight on the bus. You've no need to go anywhere, but you've just got to use it. You've got to lose it. But that's my town. Now, we're born and bred in this town, and um, many, many years ago, it was the envy of the North West. We had, we had the open market. We had a market hall with all independent traders now the market hall's gone and it's now all um, shops and stores overpriced so there was hundreds of independent traders when they shut the market hall down 
nowhere to go. Is either pay to rent one of the shops or go somewhere else in the town centre or go to the next nearest market. Why well, I used to go into I used to go into the town centre like regular when I was younger. I used to love going into the town. But now I've moved outside of town and the only time I go in the town centre is when I'm driving through it because it doesn't appeal to me anymore. There's nothing there. And I know it's happening all over the country. It's happening everywhere. There's other towns, other cities that are going through exactly the same, all the urban regeneration. But to me it's old style van old style family values i know people probably say i'm a bit of a dinosaur and we've got to move with the times yeah we do have to move with the times but we can keep our heritage and i think that's what's happening in england now i think that's what's happening in towns and cities We're losing our heritage and i think it's a sorry state of affairs but that's just my rant that's my rant that's that's my bit of a rant today but if you've got any different views you know I'm always open to discussions, I'm always welcome to uh, listen to other people's points of view but it's 2019 and point one is that nobody should be homeless, that's my main point. So we'll carry on with this flight and we'll uh, get this plane down in Sumbra, get these passengers off so then I can do my next flight.
Welcome back into FS Economy. Um, I'll just refresh my page. As you can see, now the fight's been done. There's nothing, there's no aircraft been rented. All right, we'll just go into our payment log. Um, as you can see, the income was $7,692. I rented the aircraft for one hour and 38 minutes, which cost me $879.18. And ground crew fee cost me $769.20. So altogether, that was a grand total of $1,923.25. Got a distance bonus of $192.57. Bucket closer to its own base, which left me with earnings this flight of $5,960. $1.32. So what we'll do there is we'll go and put that into our bank, deposit that, we'll leave the 30 cents in. As you can see, we're just a few thousand dollars short of owning our own Cessna. Cheapest one at 168, we're at 164. There's no debt on this one, costs is £1,100 a month to own. But once I've started uh, renting the aircraft out, I'll start making that money back. But what I'll do from now, I'll leave it for now. Uh, I'll join you next time. Don't forget, if you made it this far in the video, it'd be really appreciated if you smash that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification for any further productions, any more videos. And give me a big fat thumbs up. Really does help me. That's me, Doug Sharple, signing off. Wishing you happy fightings and bye-bye.